Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. You're listening to the Deal Room Podcast. Join us as we bring you the inside scoop on business sales and acquisitions. Get across trends in the area and hear the industry's best recount their real life tips, traps, and experiences. Now, here's your host, Joanna Oki. Hi, it's Joanna Oki here and welcome back to the Deal Room Podcast, a podcast proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. Welcome to the second half of our two-part series all about the evolution of business broking in Australia. We're joined again today by Max Kurz and Mike Smith, the founding fathers of the Australian Institute of Business Brokers, otherwise known as the AIBB, a bit less of a mouthful, that one, pick up on our insightful reflections on the evolution of business broking in Australia and pick up on a few interesting factors that have contributed to big changes in the broking industry over time. We chat through some less favourable habits from the property industry that sometimes transfer through to the broking industry, and we also drill into the importance of discipline in the business broking sector. Max and Mike also share a few relevant war stories from their time in business broking, and don't we all love to get a bit of a tip out of uh, war stories from the past? So some great tips and tricks are in this episode. Now, of course, if you miss part Part one, don't forget to go back to that and listen. You can find the link to that episode in our show notes. But for now, here we go with part two of the evolution of business broking in Australia with the AIBB founding fathers, Max Kurz and Mike Smith. I'd say um, in my experience, every second or third broker I come across has gotten into business broking after selling their own business. I don't know if it's just the brokers I'm talking to. What's your um, What's your thoughts? Do you see a lot of this in the industry? It must must be one of it's such a rare industry where that is such a large pool of talent of people coming in the in into the industry. You know from the perspective of having experienced the industry first on the client side. Yeah, I think that's right. I think a lot of people do do that. I can tell you what uh, doesn't happen, and that is that the typical real estate agent, the guy that you know works on the weekend with his bright red jacket and so forth, in business <laughs> sales, that doesn't work at all. Right. Absolute disaster, right? They come <laughs> with a lot of bad habits and, and in many cases based upon training that was years ago supplied in the real estate industry, mm-hmm. and uh, that that just doesn't seem to adapt to business sales at all. Yes, someone owning their own business, I think, is a big head start. I think that's mm-hmm. probably a pretty good place, generally speaking, to start thinking about getting involved in business sales. Yep. And now I'm fascinated. What are some of those bad habits that you think um, that can be brought in from the property industry? Um, I think was for a lot of people not really understanding that you de- they're dealing with an intangible. With mm. a business, it's not what you can see and touch and walk through. It's because we've actually, all of us, I think, have sold businesses from time to time where there is nothing to touch, nothing to walk through, right? Mm. It's an online business operated from a little computer in someone's bedroom, right? Mm. Um, It's all about the stability of the business, the risk involved in running it, and the the amount of profit that's involved in it. That's that's the key thing. And I think real estate people have terrible trouble adapting to that. I really think they do. And way back, I recall running a a training course many years ago, and one of the guys in the front row was was saying to me, and I was sort of complaining about the fact that uh, still in the industry then, and it really is the same now, that we have too many people, uh, too many brokers listing businesses that are grossly overpriced and then struggling to sell them, which I think creates all sorts of problems. Mm, yeah. And this fellow in the front row of my training class said, oh, yeah, but he said back in the 50s, that's the way that LJ Hooker trained all of their real estate people to sell. You went out, you saw Mrs. Brown, and Mrs. Brown was thinking that her house back in those days was worth 200000 Um 
And uh, you said, okay, that's fine, knowing full well it was only worth 150. And if it if it took an agreement verbally to uh, list the business at 200000 to get it to sign the form, you did. It didn't mm. matter what the price was. And then before the ink on the form was dry, you started working on the vendor to drop the price down, right? Wow. You started saying, well, you know, I think your price is a bit optimistic and we'll do the best for you that we can. And it really is a determination of the marketplace. Uh, but, you know, I think I think there's a chance and we'll work on it. And they'll just keep working on it. That was standard mm. LJ Hooker policy, right? And they trained all their salesmen to do that. I think that is absolutely criminal, and I think it cre- creates all sorts of problems. And that sort of um, attitude, there's no place for that in business sales. It still exists, mm. but there's no place for it. And I think the sooner we can train our way out of that, the better. In, in business broking, there's a required discipline, but there's a discipline that's required. Yeah. And you've really got to be very disciplined in terms of understanding the process. Mm. It's much more yep. investigative than it is in the yes. state. Yep. So, you know, uh, the success of any business agent today is the one that basically understands that particular discipline. Mm. Yep. It's like, for example, the accountants who undertake or attempt to undertake selling businesses. Naturally, from an accountant's perspective, they're going to go to the financials first and foremost. Mm. Everything evolves around the financials. And if you ask most accountants, everything starts from the multiple of three. You go to a business agent who really is well-honed, the business agent recognises that financials is a result of what the business does. It's not what the business does. So your microscope goes over the business first and foremost to learn and understand what the business does. And then you go to the financials. Mm. And then you can arrive at an understanding what the earnings levels are and the multiple of earnings. Mm. So these are sort of disciplines. And I'm only uh, giving you an example of one part of the process, which yeah. doesn't exist in real estate. Real mm. estate, you give them the manual. Here it is from A to Z, page three, this is what you do. Mm. Yes. Business broking, no, that's mm. not the price. Of well, and I guess you can you, you can comment on that, Max. Given you talked about you, you know back in the nineteen sixties, having started in real estate, so I guess that's where it all began for you. And, and that was the very education, the very exposure that I had to real estate, which I didn't like. That took mm. me out of real estate. Mm. I didn't like the way real estate was being conducted. Mm. I didn't like the attitude of the of the. Uh, community towards estate agents and estate agents towards the community. Mm. I mean, it, it, to me, it just what well, didn't have a professional platform at all. Mm. Mm. And that's why I became a valuer. Uh, property valuers were had a little bit better regard. In the, <laughs> in, in the, uh, so, you know, you could do a little better and you were getting paid better. So, yeah. Makes me throw in the reputation, apparently, that lawyers have sometimes out there in the field too. <laughs> They're not always regarded with with so I think much Lawyers have come a long way. <laughs> well, some of us try, some of us try. <laughs> uh, and what about, you know, to round it out, I guess, I guess I'd, I'd love to hear two stories from each. Firstly, maybe a war story, because uh, and I guess sort of thinking back, you know, the most memorable story. I love a war story and 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 a happy story. So, um, Max, I feel like you've got one on the tip of yeah, your tongue. There. No, no, I haven't. No, I tell you what, I'm going to share with you. Okay, this is of any value. Um, basically, I've transacted over forty five years, hundreds of businesses. Mm. And a lot of these have been archived now, and I've been retired uh, just over the last couple of years. So it's probably there's been so much variety and, you know, of the type of businesses that I've been involved in. But I tell you what it, I, is a common denominator from almost all businesses. Back in 1997, I wrote a book called Should I, Shouldn't I? Oh, now, I love about, it. Think about the title, Should I, Shouldn't I? What does that mean? Why did we uh, title the book, Should I, Shouldn't I? You know why? Because the common denominator with business owners and sellers and buyers is that they didn't know what they wanted to do. 
Mm. They were in the market subconsciously with the idea that they're thinking of change. And it's a very difficult environment to change out of. When you've been in mm. business, let's take not the business owner that virtually is in and out of businesses in six months and 18 months and 12 months. Yes, there's plenty of those. But the real business owners that are stayers, that are in businesses 5, 10, 15, 20 years, very difficult for them to implement change. But mm. they get to a retirement. We dealt with a lot of retirement in terms of businesses. And they really contact a business agent because they want to understand what the, what the process is. So they come with this pseudo approach that I'm think, I want to sell my business. They don't really want to sell their business. They want to really understand what is involved in the sale of the business. So that's where you've got to be a psychologist and mm-hmm. virtually understand what the purpose of the inquiry, what their, what their motivation is. And you get to the root part of it and they're thinking about selling. They're thinking about buying. So that prompted us to write this book, Should I, Shouldn't I? And it in virtually encapsulated a lot of the processes, things that talk in a language that is virtually not academic. It's really raw conversation about what it is. What's the, what, what is life after owning a business? What is the responsibility of a business owner if you've come from an employment uh, uh, environment and you're coming into business for the first time? I found that the most challenging part of the uh, my uh, uh, my experience as a business agent. That is so fascinating. I want a copy of the book, Max. As you yes. know, I um I I'm I'm right into books. I've just written one recently myself, but I love that. Should I? Shouldn't I? And uh, you, uh, you're spot on with what I see all the time. Just this this element of emotion, I just think, is so often overlooked. Um, it just so often overlooked. I've actually devoted a chapter to it because I I feel like it's such a key element. Um, actually, I studied psychology was one of my majors when when I studied way back when at uni, and I actually feel like it has been the most important part of my education um, in dealing not just in this industry and anything to do with business and law, but particularly in this industry. Um, and I think, you know, every now and again I say that to people and they think I'm a bit weird, but um, but I, I just think it's understanding people because this is such a people industry. You, you know, it's just all based on that element of that emotion and working our buyers and our sellers through this emotion that we know they're going to go through. Um, I love it, Max. And Mike, how about you? Any um, stories pop to mind of um, very interesting things that may have happened over the years? Oh, well, there's been, I suppose, two things I think of, one one good, one bad. Many years ago, uh, just to be brief, we, we had a substantial settlement back in the early days. I, I think it was two million or something. And um, and the vendor rang me up and said, uh, oh, Mike, look, it's 10 in the morning. The settlement's taking place now. It's all going to be fixed up. We're having drinks in the boardroom at 2 o'clock. Please come across. We've got some champagne. I'd like to thank you for your hard work and so on. And I arrived over there. And it was really good, and the champagne was flowing. And the and the vendor took me one side. He said, uh, Mike, listen, by the way, he said, uh, he said, I just want to check. My solicitor did pay you this morning, didn't he? And I said, well, no, as a matter of fact, he didn't. He said, oh, he said, I'm terribly sorry. How embarrassing. He said, come into my office. And we went to the office and he closed his door. And he said, how much was your fee? And I told him what it was. I can't recall now. And, and he hauled his checkbook out and he just wrote out the check and gave it to me. He said, thank you so much for what you've done. I really appreciate it. And my apologies for not paying you sooner, right? And we went back and we got stuck into the champagne, you know. Now, that guy really appreciated what I'd done. And, and um, it was a very, very happy sale. On the other side, I don't know why this happened. This is a freak set of circumstances. But about 15 years ago, we went through, a, I, I personally went through a phase where I was getting call after call from people who were terminally ill, right? Mm. A bit hard to believe. Mm. In three years, I had seven, right? <gasps> In three years. Three or four of them never got as far as settlement. Right, oh. because they're just too ill, 
Um, mm. All the sales went through. In, all, in every case, each person had contacted me far too late mm. in their medical cycle, health cycle, and we, we had to jump on the bandwagon and, and hurriedly rush around and get a, a sale organised. Uh, and um, I won't say we all lived happily ever after because we didn't, but, but uh, we were able to help them. And I, quite frankly, given the circumstances, if I hadn't affected those sales for them, that would have been seven businesses that would have been closed up. There's no mm. doubt about that, right? Mm. So you get the opportunity, you know, to get some recognition for what you do. Other times you know you're helping people because, frankly, I know that they don't know what they're doing, right? They've got mm. no idea what they're doing. So they mm. need someone like me to hold their hand and walk them through the process. And I think Max would absolutely agree with that. Yep. There's just so much to learn. There are so many little things that can go wrong. There's so much legislation to worry about that, you know, you don't have to be a genius, but, you know, to have a lot of experience is everything, mm. is everything, you know. Mm. So, yeah, no, it's it's been good. I've, I've really enjoyed it. I don't want to get out. I'm still charging ahead. And, uh, and <laughs> I and, love it. And enjoying it. <laughs> and how about you, Max? When you reflect over your time as a business broker, is it with a lot of joy or just exhaustion? Do you really feel like you need to <laughs> sleep for quite a long uh, time now? <laughs> I can't tell you. I've said it over and over again, Joanna. I am privileged. I yeah. really am privileged. I got into business broking by default. Uh, yes, I saw the syn I thought there was a synergy between real estate and business, um, but it really suited my personality. I really, it was like a glove on one hand, it fitted perfectly. <coughs> and yes, there was an enormous amount of challenges and struggles. I'm very privileged because I was able to be a part of an organization where I truly believed I was so hungry for education and training. I didn't have a good early childhood and adulthood education, unfortunately. Uh, the circumstances prevailed didn't allow me to do that, but I made up for lost time. And you know what? Who would have ever thought from where I've come from that I would end up being an educator? Not just in terms of developing the infrastructure, the framework for education and training, which has been done by so many people, and I've been a part of that with AIBB, but also been an educator, teaching mm. this. And that part of it I love because every time I'm mentoring somebody, I'm involved in education and training, I'm reflecting back on my experiences mm. and they're like gold. It is really oh, it's been, just so beautiful. In a, it's been a, an amazing journey and I think there's so much more to go. And I think watch this space because virtually uh, the, the business agents of today, of tomorrow, uh, will be a much more, they will be the beneficiaries of all that's taken place over time. Yeah. And we'll see a much more professional uh, style of business agent. Um, and the relationship between those uh, stakeholders that are involved in transactions lawyers, accountants, business agents will be a much more harmonious approach mm. and a cooperative approach than it has been in the past. We struggle with lawyers and, and accountants mm. in the past. Why? Mm. Because we were business agents. What do you know? Mm. But we do know a lot. Mm. Mm. Totally understand that. And, you know, I feel like it should be a requirement in the industry for anyone working on a transaction. So, but you know, broker accountant lawyer to actually have some sort of passion for the industry you know yeah. because we're dealing with people's lives and and I say this to our team I'd say once a week we are in the most privileged position um in in the, the clients that we're serving because what we are doing here has real meaning you know for people we're at what can be the most emotional point in their business career, you know, and one of the most important oftentimes. And I love this industry because, um, by George, there's a lot of things to do in law that are not <laughs> as exciting and, and positive 
and and it's an industry where you truly a job done well is finding the win-win in a good deal for everyone, don't you think, and getting the transaction yeah. across the line. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. from a business agent's perspective, you would never have dreamed, and I tell this to all the people that I am involved in in terms of education and mentoring, you would never have dreamed that a vendor, one of the uh, the uh, uh, the good stories I can tell you, where a vendor would um, uh, have a complex issue going on and the lawyer would say to them, this is what we need to do, or the accountant would advise them. And the, the vendor turns around and says, yeah, you know what I want to do? I want to run that past Max first. I want to have Love to it. talk to him first. Mm. Yeah. Love yeah. That, there's no, you know, you've achieved something. That's yeah. absolutely true. You're 100% correct there, Max. Um, look, I just want to say thank you, huge thank you to both of you, both for coming on to the podcast, but just the mark that you've made in the industry. You know, it's just so fascinating hearing about the evolution and the changes over time, just massive changes. Um, I'm someone who's very optimistic and I'm super excited to see where where it all goes in the future. But just, you know, a massive thank you. Thank you for your role in the industry and a huge thank you for coming on board to the podcast today. Any parting words um, from either of you? And please also a shout out. I'd like you to also tell our listeners how they can get in contact with you if they want um, they, they want the wealth of experience in the industry to go to. So um, parting words and contact details. Why, why don't we head that over to you, Max? I don't even know if you want people to contact you now, Max. Where are you out there? <laughs> uh, I think most of the members of the AIBB know who I am and they can more than welcome to contact me anytime. Uh, parting words is basically um, live your life and your work with passion. I love Commit it. to what you're doing and learn. You know, I'm 82 years of age and I never, ever stop learning. It's an ongoing process. Yep. So just continue to learn. This is a great opportunity. I would like to see this open up to younger, the younger generation. What you said before, uh, Joanna and Mike. Yes, basically, we get a lot of people coming from businesses, retirees coming into business broking, and that's probably a good mix uh, for, for for all the right reasons. But I'd like to see the younger generation. I'd like to see this become a vocation for the younger generation. It's a great privilege to be in a occupation like this that is such a good point i love that idea max i've never even thought about that um and mike I, over to you for your parting ideas and and if our listeners want to contact you yeah well i, I wish they would <coughs> if, if, <laughs> if only to get some free advice because uh, <laughs> you know over many years you do you do learn a lot and and the advice is free. Anyone that's got a problem or they're not sure what to do, they're halfway through a sale and they're stuck, uh, give me a call, please. I you know, deem it a privilege to give you some free advice. You don't have to take any notice of it if you don't want to, right? <laughs> but it is free and it is good, and I can assure you it'll be the best I can provide. If I, if I can't answer your particular question because it is industry-specific to something I have no knowledge of, um, Throughout the industry, I have got so many good friends. Max, and there's just a list of them. I couldn't tell you how many there are. Who I know will give me very good good advice or help me with a particular problem. And so I've got access to a lot of uh, information uh, directly as well. So if I don't have the answer, one of my friends will have it and, and will get it for you. So always uh, call. It's not a problem. Advice is free. I love it. I love it. Well, look, just a huge thank you to you both for coming onto the podcast. It was an absolute pleasure. pleasure. One of my favourite. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much. much. Well, that's it for this episode of the Deal Room Podcast. We hope you're now primed for your next deal with these pointers and have enjoyed these fascinating insights. Now, if you'd like more information about this topic, then head over to our website at the Deal Room Podcast. 
dot com where you'll be able to download a transcript of this episode as well as access any contact details and any other additional information we referred to in today's podcast. Now if you'd like to get in contact with our guests today and the services they offer, you can go ahead and check out our show notes for a link right through to them and their details. You can also book in directly with our legal legals at Aspect Legal if you'd like to soundboard your next steps, discuss a legal question, or find out more how we can assist, whether that's with buying or selling a business, or perhaps somewhere in between. Now, don't forget to subscribe to The Deal Room Podcast on your favourite podcast player to get notifications whenever a new episode is out. We'd also love to hear your feedback, so please leave us a review and rating if you're already one of our subscribers, or even if you're listening to this podcast for the very first time. Every review helps our team produce valuable content for you. Well, thanks again for listening in. You've been listening to Joanna Oki and the Deal Room Podcast, a podcast proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. See you next time. Aspect Legal has a number of great services that help businesses prepare for a sale or acquisition to help them prepare in advance and to get transaction ready. We've also got a range of services to help guide businesses through the sale and acquisitions process. We work with clients both big and small and have different types of services depending on size and complexity. We provide a free consultation to discuss your proposed sale or acquisition. So see our show notes on how to book a time to speak with us or head over to our website at aspectlegal.com.au. Ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude this evening's entertainment. Thanks for listening to the Deal Room Podcast. To find out more about this episode and other episodes in the series, check out the show notes or head over to our website at thedealroompodcast.com.au.